things, we don't really know what it's like to not have anything, or at least, probably if you're seven years old and older, you know what it's like not to get anything for Christmas. I know you guys are a little harder than the rest of us. But anyway, it's we, we're, we're just blessed here in America. And so we need to take an opportunity like this to bless those kids and these other little four nations that have never gotten anything. And I find it interesting, I find it fun to think that the little gift that you give them Probably, as an adult, they will have in their little hogan or hut or wherever they happen to live because that was maybe the only thing they've actually been given. We don't know. That's weird to think about, isn't it? But to so many, it's a reality. So I'd encourage you to be a part of that. Allow that to be something that your, that your family does together. Allow your children to be helping purchase those things for other children. Those are going to be returned by next Sunday, so please do that. Um, we have a, uh, next uh, next Sunday night, we have a community uh, Thanksgiving service. This isn't a meal, but it's a service, and it's going to be at 6 o'clock, and it's at the church that's called That Church, okay? It's uh, the church, it's on Highway Business 45, uh, it's on the east side of the road, and it'll start at 6 o'clock. This is when all the churches from the community all come together for worship and message and just fellowship with Christ. So anyway, be there for that. It starts at 6 o'clock next Sunday. Uh, and then we're having a fundraiser for the building edition. Uh, it's all going really well. I think we're doing good in the budget. Uh, uh, but you all agree with me that if you're in construction stuff, the wood cost has skyrocketed over the last, since COVID, it's skyrocketed. So it's, we're still doing good. But, but anyway, we're doing a little fundraiser for that. All right, it's this 65-inch uh, TV, and I want to thank uh, Rick Slacker and Cindy Slacker for donating that TV to us for a fundraiser, so we make sure you tell them thank you very much. Now it's five dollars a ticket, or if you buy five tickets, it's twenty dollars. Okay, so uh, we got some girls back there in the back. Give us a holler, girls. <coughs> there you go. They're back there in the back, and uh, they'll help you out and help you get that purchase. Uh, and then we will be uh, we will be doing the, um, the uh, we'll be picking the ticket, the winning ticket, uh, November 29th, which is the last Sunday of this month. So. Anyway, construction is going well. Uh, we, I'm, I'm very for sure we're going to be on the stage this uh, this next Sunday, uh, and this, everything should be painted and everything by then. But I believe we will be on the stage next Sunday. Uh, get to use it. The sound system's working, but we need the guy to come and work with the tune band to tune it all in. So band, just be ready. I don't know at what night that's going to be yet, but Monday night I'll get knocked down. And we'll just need you guys to be here on that particular night to get everything tuned in. I'd like a quick elders meeting just right after church. And I would like to invite uh, Mark Berkey. You here? Come on down if you are. Come on down real quick. Give him a hand. I'd like to invite Willow. Come on down, Willow. Give her a hand. And then a bigger hand for Mr. James Hall. Come on down. Come on, Willow.
Lord and our Savior. Thank you, God, for your love. We thank you, God, for our church. We thank you, God, for our church family, Lord. And I pray that you'd bless us today, God, with your presence. Lord, I pray that the music would bring worship to you, Father. And, Lord, I pray that as you go throughout this next week, you'd be humming some of the same songs that we sing to you tonight, today. Lord, we pray that you'd be with the message and it'd be just exactly what each of us needs, Father. I pray that we would leave here encouraged and challenged and confident in our walk with you. Lord, we want to thank you that you are a light to our feet and a lamp to our path. And Lord, I pray that we as, as Christians would simply follow that Holy Spirit as you light, as you light our ways. We love you, we praise you, we lift you up. And for all you do, we give you honor and glory. In your name we ask these saints. Amen. All right, hello, Lone Star Cowboy Church in Navarra County. How's everybody doing this morning? Isn't this great? Isn't this great? I'm getting there or what? Well, just give everyone that's been involved with this. There's so many people that have been out here through the week, and the contractors, everybody, everybody's scrambling. But just give everybody a hand. <laughs> well, I tell you what, we are we are blessed. Amen. It's good to see everybody. Got some new faces. They're probably not new faces. I just probably haven't been paying attention, right, Marky? That's probably what it is. But uh, it's so good to see you. Make them feel welcome. We hope you like the way we go about worshiping here at Lone Star Cowboy Church. And regular folks, good to see you. How you doing, Ron? You doing all right? We used to see you way off to the side, man. You can hear us all right. Good to see you. Uh, looking at these kids right over here. Man, are they growing. My goodness, James. Well, well, I get distracted sometimes pretty easy. I want everybody to kind of, now most everybody's aware, let's keep Levon and Bill in your prayers right now. Um, let's just go to the Lord right now. Father, we just lift this family up to you. We just lift Bill up to you right now, Lord. We just ask you to, to help the all the doctors. You are the great physician, Lord. We just ask you to help bring a healing to his body. We ask comfort and direction to his family. Strengthen Levon. Help her to do everything she needs to do, but we just ask you to strengthen her and be able to put a healing on Bill right now. We ask this in your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, in, uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19, it says, Addressing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing, and making melody to the Lord with your heart.
Everybody good? All right, in Psalms chapter 86, verse 15. But you, O Lord, are a God of merciful and gracious. Amen? Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Well, we got a little tree going. Randy's going to do one here. He did a on Monday night a couple weeks ago and a great song. And uh, I want y'all to give him a hand. He's been going in for Mr. Donnie right here. Thank you. 
just as we are, we come before you today. Lord, we come with needs, we come with heartaches, we come with struggles, we come with joy, we come with great blessings. But Lord, we are your people and we come before you today and just, just want to be in your presence. We want to hear a word from you today. Lord, I pray that you would grant that. Use this Old Testament story to make a New Testament change in our lives. Father, I pray that as Tim prayed earlier, that you would just be so very close to Bill right now. Lord, we pray that he would understand again what healing truly is. Lord, we pray that he would have a, a Holy Spirit encounter in his life, Father, and that he would have a new testimony of redemption, restoration, and healing. Father, we don't always understand why things happen, God. We were celebrating this victory of, of being cancer-free, and now all of a sudden he finds himself in the hospital again with strokes, a mild stroke, but the fear of the unknown. Give them peace. Give them that peace that Scripture says surpasses all understanding. Give Bill and give Laban a renewed strength that scripture talks about. When we can't feel like we can make another step, that renewed strength helps us to carry on. We ask that you grant that to them. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that your presence would be there in that hospital room. Bringing assurance, joy, comfort, even in the midst of a difficult time. We thank you that you brought them into our church family, Lord, and I pray that as a church family, we would all in one accord pray for our brother in Christ. We love you, Lord. We praise you. Open up the word for what you have for us today. Help us to be challenged and renewed. And it's in your name we ask these things. Amen. Well, I've got to admit, we've got a, a special guest here today. Well, everybody here is special, but if you went to the rodeo last night, you got to watch that. Uh, a gentleman uh, do the, the, the entertaining act, the rodeo clown, and uh, Ronald, it's good to have you here with us today. And because he's here, I've got to share, I've been, I got one t opportunity to share one of my very favorite jokes with a guy who may be able to use it as he goes down the road. So if you've heard my joke lately, you just kind of laugh again. This is all for you, Ronald. Okay, it's just for you. What? Oh, children, you're dismissed. See you. You guys are dismissed. So a fella goes, he's, he's a garage seller, he's walking up and down the roads, enjoying the garage sales, and lo and behold, he sees a sign at one of the garage sales that says, Talking Dog for Sale. Well, he can't hardly believe that this guy would have a dog that would talk, and so he says, excuse me, could you explain your sign here? The guy says, yeah, he said, I've got a, I've got a dog in the backyard that he'll talk to. And he said, you're kidding me. He'll, he'll literally hold a conversation with you? And he said, yeah, you can go out back if you want to visit with him. And so he goes around back, and there on the other side of the fence, laying underneath a tree, is a, is a dog. And the dog's enjoying the shade of the tree. And he looks up, and he sees the man, and he says, well, hello, sir. It's good to see you. Well, the guy was shocked. He'd never talked to a talking dog before. And he, he's mesmerized, and he says, uh, wow, how, how did you... How'd you learn how to talk? When did you learn you knew how to talk? The dog chuckles a little bit and he says, Oh, he goes, you know, I knew, I learned how to talk when I was just a puppy. He said, but when my owner realized I could talk, he said, man, he got me busy. He said, he got me hooked up with the FBI. He said, I went all over the United States solving crimes with the FBI. They would put me in those interrogation rooms and I would just sit in the corner quietly and Whenever the men didn't realize what was going on, they would begin to talk. And he goes, I, I solved all kinds of crimes with the FBI. He said, but then the airports, things started taking place in airports, and they invited me to, to start walking the, the, the aisles and, and then all these airports. He said, you would be shocked at all the paraphernalia that I caught before they ever entered into the airports. He said, it was, it was quite exciting. I had an exciting life because I got to go all over the world and, and be with all these high flute people. He said, but you know, after a while, you just get tired of living that high society life. If you want to settle down and raise your own little pup litter of puppies and get married. And he said, I did that. I, I found this man and he raised her. He took me in and I had a wife and I raised two litter of puppies back here in this backyard. And he said, 
said, hey, you know what? This has truly been the best part of my life. The guy was shocked and just mesmerized by this, this dog's story. And so he goes back up to the front and he says, Sir, I don't imagine I can afford such an amazing dog with such a great history. He said, But i got to ask, what are you asking for that dog? And the guy said, Look, you give me 20 bucks and you can have that dog. The guy gasped. He says, Why would you sell such an amazing dog for $20? And he said, Because that dog's a liar. He didn't do any of those things. <laughs> Come on, you guys are asleep. Wake up. Heard it before, that's a funny one. Yeah, yeah, get it. Yes, wake up. Wake up. I want you to go to Genesis chapter 12. We're going to interest Mary, let's do an interesting story or read an interesting story. This is a uh, story about Abram. And it says this Genesis chapter 12. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land I will show you. Let me reread that. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land that I will show you. Go leave everything you know, he says. Verse 2, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed. Through you. So Abram, Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out, out from Haran. He took his wife, Sarah, his nephew, Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people that they had acquired from Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree. In this particular passage, God speaks to Abram. Okay, later on becomes Abraham. But God speaks to Abram. And I want you to understand that God speaks to us. It's quite amazing when we're going through life and all of a sudden God speaks to us. You may ask, I, when I was, I went to Vegas a uh, couple of, several years ago, you guys sent me to Vegas, to the NFR, I had a wonderful time, and uh, uh, we got, we were in the MGM, right, Tamara, and all of a sudden the alarms go off, and we had to walk down the stairs, I got to see what Mike goes sleeps in, I would have never guessed he would have been in footy pajamas, but he was, <laughs> yeah, a little, uh, little ducks on him and everything. But anyway, that alarm went off, and so we ended up all downstairs at like 2 o'clock in the morning, got to visit and everything. But we went to Vegas, and, and we were leaving the NFR, and, and uh, we got in a, a cab and, uh, and began to talk with the guy in the cab, and I told him I was a pastor, and he began to ask me about, how do you know when God speaks to you? And we began to just talk about that, and, and interesting enough, him and I have been good friends on Facebook from that moment on. We, we message a lot and share a lot of things that's going on. But anyway, God speaks to us. And I want you to know that God is still in the speaking business. He still speaks to you if you will just listen. He still speaks to me. He uses things like the Word of God. Have you ever been reading the Bible and all of a sudden you come across something that you've read many times but it, it speaks to you different? Well, that's, that's God speaking to you. He's using the Word of God to help maneuver and guide you and shape you into the person that He wants you to be. He's helping you understand that He is. Uh, he uses the Word to help you understand what your next step is in life, how to encourage you. A, a passage that you may have read a hundred times all of a sudden really encourages you and helps you just simply go through whatever it may be you're going through. He uses the Word of God to speak to us. A church, I want to encourage you to be in the Word of God. Think, if you're not in the Word of God, think of all the opportunities that you've missed for God to just give you a little nugget of His, of, of His blessing. To give you a little bit of words from Him. Think about it. If this is the Word of God, if this is God's love letter to us, then we need to open it. And as we open it, say, Lord, reveal to me what you would have for me today. <laughs> we need to be a people of the Word of God. We need to make sure that we spend time daily in our Bible. Scotty, uh, there, there's a, a wealth of knowledge in here. You want to know how to live a Christian life? It's right here. You want to know how to love your spouse? It's right here. You want to know how to love your children? 
whether they're being unruly, it's right here. You want to know how to walk in God's presence? It's all in the Word of God. We oftentimes, we just think, well, I'll just hear it from church or, uh, or I'll read it in a, on Facebook or something like that. But that's not enough. God wants us to daily spend time in His Word. Now, that doesn't mean you have to breathe for an hour. You don't have to say, okay, I'm gonna, I've got to read my Bible every day for one hour. That's not the case. Uh, some of you may do that, but others, just open up the Bible and start a little study. Just allow God to speak to you from maybe a chapter or two chapters that you've read that day. We need to be a people that get into the Word. God wants to speak to us through the Word of God, and that's why He gave it to us. And that's why it has existed for so many years now. He speaks to us in prayer. Have you ever, really, you ever noticed that? How you may bring to the Lord a, a specific need in your life and, and you bring it to the Lord in prayer and as you're praying, He begins to minister to you through that prayer. He begins to help you understand what's truly important in that prayer. Oftentimes, if, if I'm praying, maybe my wife and I are, are going through a difficult time and, and I begin to pray uh, for my spouse or my marriage or whatever the case may be, God will use that time for prayer to begin to really change my mind as to what's really important, what I should really be focused on, and how I should really be loving Sheila through maybe a difficult time. We need to be a people of prayer. we got to understand that if God is up there in heaven, and it says that He anxiously awaits the prayer and prayers of His people, then He it looks forward to you speaking to Him. If you remember, we talked in Revelations about the prayers of the people being at the altar of the Lord. Remember that? That was part of the process and the end time stuff. Y'all, I want you to find courage in the fact and confidence in the fact that the Father in heaven wants to hear from you. He wants you to speak to him. He wants to, you to cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. We need to be a people who allow him to speak to us through our prayer life. And he also speaks to us through the message. I know uh, I, I, me and a friend of mine was talking just yesterday or the day before and he said that that uh, his wife will always make the comment that uh, it seems like the preacher was preaching just to me. And he was just talking just exactly about my particular issue in life. And I know that all of us have that experience. We feel like, uh, we feel like the message was just exactly for us. Well, why is that? It's not because I was, I preached the message just specifically for you. To truth be known, may actually had nothing to do with, with your particular issue. But God was able to use the words and to manipulate them and to adjust them and to help you understand that He will lead and He will guide and He will direct and that He's in control. He uses the message. I, I, I dare to say that many times we leave here today and, and, and we all get different points, different portions of the message because God was able to use these different portions and different points to help just give us that little nugget that we needed just continue to go on in faith and in love. Church, we need to be a people who spend time in the Word. We need to be a people who spend time in prayer. We need to be a people who spend time here in the Word of God. We need to be people who make sure our children have an opportunity to have their own encounter with the Lord. Make sure that that's a, a, a very first priority in their life is giving them the opportunity to hear the message of Christ. Because just as God speaks to you through the message and prayer and the Word, He speaks to children. So we need to uh, make that a, a top priority in our life to lead our children to Jesus. And we do that through prayer and the Word of God and making sure they hear the message. We also, uh, the Holy Spirit speaks to us in many ways. It's quite interesting whenever we see how the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us and directs us. Uh, he bumps us and he guides us in the direction that he would have us go. And we, As we go through life, we're all of a sudden able to look back and see how God led us in the directions that he would have us be. Uh, but the Lord spoke to Abraham, or Abram, and I want you to know that the Lord is still speaking today. He speaks to us in, in unique ways. I remember one time, uh, I remember one time I was preaching a message here, and, and I was going to say something that would have been completely, it was a shock value thing, right? Everybody, Ooh. just to make a great point. And, and this, no lie, right as I got ready to say it, my, my thing went, my microphone went completely dead. Just went dead. 
And I thought to myself, oh, all right, Holy Spirit, you're speaking to me. I, I knew I probably shouldn't do it, but I was going to do it anyway. But he just said, no, you're not going to do it. Okay? It was a joke that Michelle told me. She <laughs> 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 But the, Lord, but the Lord speaks to us. There was a time in my life where I was going to, uh, uh, I was going to, that Christian college was really expensive. It just expensive. It cost a lot of money to go to a private school like that. And I got to a point where I was going to have to go back and, and I'd had a, a long, I guess, a Christmas break off. And I thought to myself, you know what, I'm, I'm just not going to go back. And I made that decision. I wasn't going to go back. And, and uh, I all of a sudden get a letter in the mail that, and from the college that said somebody put $500 in my account. And I didn't know who that was until years later. It was, my, it was uh, a family from Scott City, Kansas. Uh, I knew their son. And for some reason, they were impressed with giving $500 to put it in my account. But that was the Lord speaking. And how was he speaking? He was speaking through a $500 gift and somebody that somebody put in that account. And I knew at that moment, God was saying, Chark, you don't quit. You just be faithful. Just keep going. God speaks to us. And church, I want you to understand God is still speaking to you. In this passage, it says, The Lord spoke to Abram. And then it goes on to say, it says, it goes, Go from your country, your people, your father's household, to the land that I will show you. So where is he supposed to go? Giant cake? Where is he going? Somewhere. Somewhere. He just says, Go to the land where I will show you. Chelsea, is that enough information for you to pack up everything you got and move to Beverly? Yeah. God spoke to Abram, and he had such an ear for the Lord that when God said go, he had the faith to pack up his stuff in his possessions and just start walking. Just start following that lamp into his feet and light to his path. Psalms I think 119, 105, I believe. A lamp to our feet, a light to our path. And church, I want you to understand that we oftentimes want, God's, uh, want God to, to, to shine a 50,000 watt candlelight spotlight into our future so we know what's in our future. But scripture doesn't say he's a 50 watt, 50,000 watt candle spotlight. He says he's a lamp. And what's a lamp light up? It lights up just what's right in front of us. Just tells us what our next step is. And church, I want us to understand that we are a people who live by faith. We say, look, we believe what the word is shared with us. We believe that God loves us and leads us and guides us and directs us. And so he doesn't have to shine a spotlight into my life. All he has to do is just simply illuminate my next step. Amen. I had a, my dad worked on an auto shop for years, 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 years. It was a, a L&M manufacturer. They, they, uh, they did doesn't matter. It's an auto shop. And one day, Marge calls Dad and says, Dad, or uh, Howard, I need you to buy the shop, or if you don't buy the shop, I'm going to have to sell the shop. And Dad, he, he quit school and high school, and, and he just he didn't really feel like he could do that kind of thing, and he got really, really uh, petrified. He's a little older, and uh, he was thinking, if I don't buy this place, then I'm going to be looking for a job. And so he, he got anxious, really anxious about this. And, uh, and he began to wonder uh, what he should do. And a, he, a preacher, he talked to a preacher. And this guy gave him some real profound words. He said, he said Howard, do you know the business? And Dad said, yeah, I've worked there. I've run l and for, you know, 30 years or something. And uh, he said, okay. He said, could this be a way that God wants to bless you? And Dad said, yeah, because I don't have any retirement. So it, it could possibly be a blessing. And he said, well, Howard, just start walking through the doors that are open to you. Just start walking through the doors that are open to you. I want to give this to you. If it appears to be a blessing from the Lord, if it's a, if something that looks like God could be using to bless you, and the doors open, just begin to step into the lamp, the light to your feet, the, and the lamp, the light to your path. Just begin to step. And he said, if this is not God's will for your life, then he will what? Begin to shut doors said, just don't try to kick doors open. Just when the doors opened up, if it seems like it's God's blessing in your life, then just begin to step. If it's not God's blessing, He will shut the door. He said this, he said, it's a lot easier to hear God say, whoa, than it is to hear Him say, go. So just simply 
walk in God's presence as he opens doors. Just simply be obedient. And church, I want you to understand, it's not always easy to be obedient to the Lord. But there's times in our lives when God tells us to go. And we've just simply got to be obedient and say, I don't understand where this is going to take me. I don't, I don't know what my future holds. But I will just simply be obedient and go. When, uh, uh, years ago, when you guys called me here, it was, it, uh, it, it was a, a situation where uh, it was, we had a home in Kansas, and, and I made more money there, and, and, and it was going to be a financial struggle, but I heard God say, go, and we went, and we've been a part of the greatest church in all America. God has blessed us. Because we just obediently followed Him. Church, I want you to understand that it's not always easy to be obedient to the Lord. But as He speaks to you, as He speaks to you, live in faith and say, God, you don't have to shine a spotlight in my future. But we just simply illuminate my next step. And be obedient as you walk forward. Live in faith. Listen to this, verse, uh, verse 1. The Lord said to Abraham, go, uh, go from the country, your people, and your father's household to a land that I will show you. Verse 2. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. I'm captivated by this one point. This has been a theme in my life for the last, uh, probably the last year now. God spoke to me about this. He says this, I will bless you. And church, I want you to understand, God wants you to be blessed. He, you are his children. He wants, you to be, he wants you to be a blessed person. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to have peace. He wants you to, to uh, walk in victory in your faith. But church, that just, just doesn't happen. We don't just all of a sudden begin to follow the Lord and he just all of a sudden gives us all these blessings. What do we got to do? We got to listen we got to hear what the Lord says, and then we got to be obedient. we got to hear Him say, go, and we go. Church, God has a desire to bless you. But sometimes those blessings don't come until after you are obedient. God can't bless you if you're living in disobedience, right? You don't bless your children when they're being little scoundrels. And God can't bless us when we're walking in disobedience. If we want God's blessings in our life, then we got to be following the Lord so that we can be blessed by the Lord. And sometimes those blessings only come after we've removed... I'm not talking about your husband. Okay? Sometimes those blessings come only after you remove yourself from someone or something. Church, there's people out there in this world who will steal your blessings. They will absolutely rob you of all the blessings that you can have. And church, all too often our young people see those people who will rob you of your blessings as the cool guys. We've got to be a people who understand that God wants to bless us. And so we've got to take a good hard look at our life and say, what is in my life that is stealing my blessings? Church, if you're coming home every night and you're drinking a 30-pack of beer, your blessing is being stolen. It's being taken from you. If you're hooked on painkillers, guys, your blessing is being taken from you. If you're spending all your, your time apart from your spouse or, or, or doing things away from your family, your blessings are being stolen from you. God wants to bless you, but he says there's things in your life that you've got to remove. So that you can walk in clarity. And I can bless you. There's things in our lives that we have got to remove. You see, you can't say, I want to be a Christian. I want to live in God's blessings. But yet I still want to toy with these things that I know I shouldn't be participating in. We've got to decide. Do we want God's blessings in our life? Or do we want what the world has to offer? God wants to bless us. But we've got to be blessable. We've got to be a people who listen to that still small voice. I'll bless, I'll make you, verse 2, I'll make you into a great nation, and I'll bless you, and I'll make your name great, 
and you will be a blessing. Church, this is what I'm most captivated with. Surround yourself with people who can be a blessing to you. Surround yourself with people who can actually bless you. And surround, and surround yourself with people that you can actually bless. Teenagers, the thug is never going to bless you. He's going to do nothing but curse you. You're going to do nothing but suffer the consequences of his stupidity. The guy, church, the people in our lives that, that are going out there and living a life for the devil, they are not a blessing to you. They steal your blessings. Surround yourself with people that you can bless and that, they, and that, uh, that you can bless and that they can bless you. This life is a lot easier when you know you have a crowd of 300 people that would be right there with you at any second. But all too often we find ourselves longing for those relationships and those people who would do nothing but curse us. Church, if the people that you're surrounded by are selfish, self-centered, indulging in the things of the world, then flee from them. Flee from them. Find an opportunity where you can be a blessing to them, and in turn they can be a blessing to you. And that's when y'all say, see truly how God wants his world to work. All of us walk hand in hand, serving one another, and making being an example of Christ to a world who loves Jesus. Surround yourself with those people who can bless you. Don't, if you, young ladies, if you're dating some guy and all he can think about is his own selfish will, run from him. Guys, if you're dating a girl who's so self-absorbed and, and, and but she's good looking, that don't count. That don't matter. Run from her. Find somebody who can bless you. Life is too hard to be surrounded by people who will curse you. In our passage, Abram takes Lot, he takes his, it's his nephew, and he takes his family, and he, he leaves. And as they go, he, he's obedient to the Lord. All of a sudden, we see that he finally creates vast wealth and success. In fact, in verse 13, we, or chapter 13, we see that they become so successful that Lot is being blessed by Abram and his blessing that they both become quite successful. And it says this in verse 8. So Abram said to Lot, because they're just, they've, they've been too blessed, they're starting to absorb all the grass and everything in the lands. He says this, uh, Lot, let's not have quarreling between you and me or between your herds or mine, for uh, we are close relatives. It's not, whole, it, uh, it's not the whole land before you. Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Lot looked around and saw all that the, that the whole plain of the Jordan toward Zorah was well watered like the garden of the Lord, like the lands of Egypt. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of Jordan and set out towards the east. The two men parted company. Abram lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived among the cities of the plains and pitched his tents near Sodom. So Lot, the nephew who's been blessed by Abram's blessing, looks around and he sees the better portion of land. And he says, you know what, Abram, I'm going to take the better portions. And he turns and he goes and takes the better portions. Church, my last point today is that you, there's people all around us who look at you as an opportunity to, uh, uh, to manipulate. And Abraham and Lot are there together. And Abraham says, you just pick where you want to go and you can go. And Lot goes and he takes the best lands and the best resources. Church, there's people around us who have no nothing other than the desire to uh, to uh, to lie, cheat, and steal us. Those are those people who uh, that I talked about. Those those people who are still our blessings. Church, I want you to encourage you to flee from that type of person. Flee from those people who want to steal your blessings. In fact, in, in, instead, then go to somebody who wants to bless you and in turn you can bless. Lot goes and takes this wonderful. Property, and he goes, and, and, and uh, Abram goes another direction. And as Lot indulges in all of his prosperity and all the grasses that he just took, and so you know he's next to Sodom. 
And it ain't long until he's indulging in the things of Sodom and Gomorrah, the evil that was taking place there. And Abram, once again, has to come and save this one who went the wrong direction. Church, let's be those people who hear the word of the Lord through the word of God, through prayer, through the message, through the Holy Spirit, and follow that still that, that lamp to our feet, light to our path. Let's be that people who is a blessing to one another. That people who that surround ourselves with people who can bless you and in turn you can bless. And let's be that people who can go on and live in victory with the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day and the opportunity to, uh, to get into an Old Testament passage. Lord, we thank you for uh, the Word of God. We thank you how it can mold and shape us. And Lord, if there's anyone here today who needed to hear this message, needed to hear a portion of it, Father, I pray, God, that we would apply it to our lives and we would go out and truly be that blessable people. Help us, God, not to be captivated by the things of this world. Help us, God, not to get comfortable in misery and despair and sin, but help us, God, to flee from those things, realizing that they hold us captive. And, Lord, we truly want to live in your peace. God, bless us and keep us. Watch over us as we leave today. God, bring us back together. And would we pray that great things would be taking place in each of our lives because you're in it. Lord, for all you do, we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. God bless each of you. You're dismissed. It's good to have each and every one of you. Hey, elders, I want to have a quick meeting with you. Right up here real quick. Take two seconds.